If you want to build a test suite that you can have confidence in, you need to be able to add tests quickly and easily. One great way to do this is to build your own custom assertions that are specific to your code base and have knowledge of whatever your domain is. If you're using Jest, this is really easy to do. So let's take a look at an example. We've got a pretty basic set of tests here that are testing a get session function. The get session function is pretty straightforward. We just generate a token, choose a TTL and include the user ID. And the TTL is based on the user's role. And so in our test, we're testing these two types of sessions. When we get a user session, we should see that the token matches a particular regular expression. We have the expected time to live and the expected user ID. And the same thing, of course, for admin sessions. You can imagine as we flesh out our API, maybe there's many ways that a user might be able to obtain a session or many places where we have to validate a session in the tests. If we had a custom matcher that did session validation, we could wrap that all into a single expect statement instead of needing to do three expect statements every time we wanted to validate a session. So how can we do this in Jest? Up at the top of our file here, let's say expect.extend. And what we can do is pass our own custom matchers, as Jest calls them, to our extend function here. And then we actually have access to them throughout our code base. Maybe we want to add a to be valid session matcher. So our matcher, of course, will need to take a couple of arguments. The first argument is going to be whatever you would pass to the expect portion here. In our case, I want to pass in the whole session as the first argument. So I'll put session there and I know I can do api.session to get the type of that. I'm going to show you how to make sure this is strongly typed as well. So if you use TypeScript, hopefully that will be helpful. The second argument is going to be, well, let's see, what do we need to know? We don't really need to know the token regex. We've got that here and our uh, matcher will be able to find that. The time to live and the user ID seem to be the two values that we're going to need to check. So we'll take a user ID as a string and we'll say an expected TTL as a number. Now, it'd be nice if we could just copy our expect statements into here. Unfortunately, that's not the way Jest works. It gives you a little more flexibility in returning particular error messages, but that does mean we need to do a little more work to set this up. So let's do each one of these comparisons in just normal JavaScript. So so let's create a valid token variable here. Token regex dot test session dot token. The next argument we have is the TTL. The session dot TTL should equal our expected time to live. And finally, our valid user ID will just check that session dot user ID equals a user ID. And so now let's determine whether or not this test should pass. We can use all three of these. So we could say if the token is valid and the TTL is valid and the user ID is valid, then we know we have a valid session. And so now we have to return the correct value from our matcher. This should be an object and it needs to have two fields. The first one is pass, and that should be a Boolean, whether this test passes or fails. And the second one is a message. And this is a function that is going to return a string. So in our case, we can say uh, expected session to be a valid session. And this is the error message that will show if this test fails. So with this in place, why don't we go ahead and First, before we use it, let's make sure our tests are passing. So if I run here and test, we can see that both of those tests are passing. So now for the first test here, let's add this and I'll say expect session to be valid session. And we're going to pass it the uh, user ID that we have here and we'll pass it the number 60. All right, now before we do anything further, let's go ahead and run this and make sure our test passes. It does still pass. If we remove these, let's run this again and we should see our first test passes. We do also want to see it fail. So let's add user ID plus a couple of letters at the end and let's see what a failing test looks like. So we can see that it failed on our matcher, which is nice, and we do get the error we expected. So let's change this to pass and let's do the same thing down here and let me copy this and we'll paste it down here for our admin test we'll change the expected TTL to 15 so now we have both of our tests using this now there are a couple more things we can do here first of all let's change our message here to be expected input to be a valid session however that's not always going to be accurate because one thing just allows us to do is to do something like say expected session not to be a valid session. Maybe we can change this to say 16. And in this case, if we run our tests, the tests will pass, of course, because we said 16. But if I change this back to 15, the test fails, but it says expected input to be a valid session, which is which is not really accurate. So what we need to do is take pass into account here. Now, when we say we expect session not to be a valid session, that means whenever pass is true, the test actually fails. So we want to update the message accordingly. So what we can do 
just do is say we would expect input not to be a valid session. That's where we would want to put the word not. So I'm just going to interpolate here. If pass is true, then we want to include the word not, otherwise leave it out. And this way, if this message is being shown and pass is true, then we want to include not in there. Let's change this so both of these fail. This one is not a valid session, but the arguments say that it will be. This one should be a valid session, but we'll change that to 61. Now, when we run yarn test, we get two errors. The first one failed because we expected the input to be a valid session. Second one failed because we expected the input not to be a valid session. Now, one thing we could do to make this a little more useful is to actually show which of the fields caused the test to fail in the case where the test does fail. I think first of all, we're going to need some kind of error for each one of the possible values. So I'm going to start a messages array here at the top. And what we can do is after each one of these, we'll add to that message array. So we can say if we don't have a valid token, then messages.push and we can say invalid token. And we can do the same thing for TTL. We can say if we don't have a valid TTL, invalid TTL. And of course, finally, if we don't have a valid user ID, then we can say invalid user ID. So now that we have this array, we can actually maybe just add it at the end here. So let's put some parentheses and in here we can do messages.join. So let's see what's going to happen here. Uh, in this case, both of these tests will fail. I'm actually interested to see what happens in the not case here. I'm, to be honest, not exactly sure what the right way to add these messages in the case of not to be valid, but let's see what happens. We can uh, we can play around with this. OK, expected to be a valid session. This is very helpful. We expect the input to be a valid session and we get an invalid TTL. We could probably change that so that if this is 60 and the user ID has some other text, then what happens is we get invalid user ID instead. Nice. So that's that's great. Let's get that test passing. And then let's look at the second one here. We the input, we expected it not to be a valid session, but it was a valid session. Of course, because it was a valid session, that means nothing matched. And so I guess that's always going to be the case. If we change this to be 16, both of these are going to pass. We don't need to say which fields were invalid because we just care that one of the fields was invalid. Now, if you're using TypeScript, one thing that extend doesn't give us is strong typing on our new matcher here. You can see if I bring up the type information on to be valid session that we just get a value of any. Jeff knows that there may be custom matchers, so it allows any function to be called off of expect, but it doesn't validate what the arguments that we pass in are going to be. In fact, we could change this to, say, the string 60 and we don't get any type complaints. So let's see if we can get that fixed. TypeScript actually gives us a way to hook into the Jest types. What we can do is create our own interface here, and we're going to call it custom matchers. And it's going to take some return value, which we're going to default to unknown. That's fine. And then we can add our custom matcher here. So we have to be a valid session, and this is not going to be the exact same signature as we have in our method here. Instead, it's going to be the signature we expect to use in our test. So we only need the last two arguments. So we'll say user ID is expected to be a string and expected TTL is expected to be a number. And this should return the same type that all of these other matchers return. And of course, if you have a bunch of custom matchers, you can add as many as you want to this interface. But now that we have this custom matcher interface, what we need to do is extend the global jest namespace with this. So what I'm going to do is paste in something that I copied from the jest docs here. And let's talk through this. Jest, of course, is imported globally. And so we have the jest namespace globally. And there are three interfaces that we want to extend. We will want the expect, the matchers, and the inverse asymmetric masters. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure what the breakdown of these three things is, but we want to make sure that all three of those extend our custom matchers interface. So we're going to start with our custom matcher here and then of course layer on whatever is built in by default. And you can see that as soon as I've added this, we get some type checking down below here. Argument of string is not assignable to parameter of type number. So let's remove the quotes here and now TypeScript is happy again. So that is how we can build custom jest matchers. If you're building a large test suite, building your own custom matchers can be a great way to encapsulate a lot of knowledge about how different pieces or domain objects in your system should behave and easily verify them throughout your tests. This can make adding new tests much faster and make it easier for you to have a fully comprehensive test suite for your projects. If you have other strategies that you use that make it easy to do the right thing when it comes to testing, let me know in the comments. Otherwise, thanks for watching.